in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You're the way maker. Break every chain, Lord. Break every chain, Lord. Break every force of the enemy. Every lie of the enemy. Every deceitfulness of the enemy. God, everything the enemy would put upon the families of this church, I pray that you break it. Be their strength, their help, in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. That is who you are. He want I'll see you working. Lord, when I can't see you working, I know you're working. Lord, when I can't feel you near, I know you're near. Lord, when it seems like everything's all upside down, I know that you're there. When I can't see you, when I can't understand, when I don't have the answer, God, I know that you're with me. Jesus said he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you to the ends of the world. There's an odd thing about a trial. There's an odd thing about a tough time that we go through in life. It can be very, very odd because it feels like, Sister Valerie, when we're at our lowest, it feels like when the fire's the hottest and the valley's the deepest and the night's the darkest. There's an odd thing about that. It's at that moment that God seems to be and feels like He's farthest away. It's very odd. I, I've even talked to the Lord about that very thing. I've been in some deep valleys. Dare I say, can I be just totally honest with the people of God this morning? Brother Emory even hinging on depression. Discouraged, depressed, sad. Yeah, even tears on my pillow at night. Heartbreaking. And I've asked God, God, where are you? It, it, it doesn't even make sense. I, I get to what feels like one of my lowest moments. You, you said you'd be my strength, you'd be my fortress my high tower, my counselor, my deliverer. Lord, your word says you'd be all these things to me, but I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out, Lord, and I can't feel that warmth of your presence. Lord, I can't seem to touch the hem of your garment. Lord, I can't seem to get into your presence. The heavens sing brass. Lord, when I pray, I kneel down to pray, and all I can hear ringing in my ears is a loud silence is screaming at me. I, I reach up to you, Lord, and I, all I see is a brass ceiling. And my prayers are bouncing back at me. I don't seem like you hear me, Lord. I don't know if I can do it by myself. I want to show the people of God. His word is always true. He said, I will not put on you more than you can bear. He said, my grace is sufficient for your ever need. And he said, I will be with you until the ends of the world. Good people of God, let me tell you, no matter where you're at this morning, I want to tell you in the Holy Ghost, I feel God's anointing right now. No matter where you're at, friend, let me tell you, you may not can feel him. You may kneel down and your ears scream with silence. It seems like God Almighty has shut the heavens to you. But let me tell you, the Holy Ghost, nothing, nothing gets by him. He sees all things. He knows all things. Yeah, he sees you when you kneel down in prayer and you cry out to him, God, I need you. Where are you, Jesus? 
I can't feel you. He sees when you just dig a little deeper and say, Lord, I don't understand. I don't know what's going on, but I got to make it. I got to pull through. And I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to pray when I can't feel you. Yes, sir. I'm going to worship you when I can't feel you. I'm going to walk when I don't know where you're at. I'm going to reach to you when it seems like you're a million miles away. I wonder if anybody in this house can relate to what I'm talking about. Did anybody in this house been where I'm talking about. I've been there. Amen. If you've been there, or you may be there right now, or you may be about to go there, but no matter the situation, one more time, can we slip our hand up in the air? I just love him a little bit. I believe somebody received the Holy Ghost right now. Holy Ghost is in the house. If you've never received the Holy Ghost, all you've got to do is repent of your sins, ask God to forgive you. And then as the Spirit begins to flow over you, open your mouth. The first thing that's not English or your native language, you're not going to understand it. God's got to control it. You can't control it. Give him your tongue. Let him begin to speak whatever, sound whatever. No matter how it sounds, let it flow. Saint of God, if you've been in a trial, if you've just come through a trial, or you feel and see a trial coming on, why don't you right now, why don't you bathe yourself in the presence of God? Bathe yourself in the mercies of God. You never, ever know when a trial is going to come your way. You need to reach in the resources pull out some things that you stored up. Oh God, we love you this morning. <laughs> Young people, would you do me a favor? Would you gather around Brother Boo? Let him feel your love. Let him hear your prayer. Pray with him. Brother Boo has gone through some things in school that you only dream of. Many of you have never faced what he's faced. I want the Lord to touch him this morning. He's wanting to stand for God and live for God. He's preaching to God. I want the enemy to be defeated this morning. Adults, why don't you put your hand out towards Brother Boo this morning. Pray for him. Oh, 
but oh, hallelujah. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. You're awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise, and to you our hands we raise. You are awesome in this place. That's it, let the Holy Ghost flow. That's the way you feel about him. Let him know this morning. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father, yeah. You're worthy of our praise. And to you our hands we raise. Oh God! Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, hallelujah. Awesome in this place, Abba Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to turn your attention to Micah chapter 7. We're going to start in verse 8. I feel like I got a word for somebody this morning. I've been marinating on this message for a couple of weeks. I felt like this morning was the time to preach it. Amen. God's Spirit is going to hover here. And I believe the Lord is fixing to speak to somebody. When I begin to work on this message, begin to look at it. Many things that have transpired have not. But I believe the Lord this morning knew exactly who would be here. And I believe he's going to give encouragement this morning. Hallelujah. Micah is a book in the Bible. Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want Brother Boo to hear this message. So if I can, if I can get you to find your seats. If I can get everyone to find your seats. Amen. Brother Boo, God's going to touch you after this message. God's got a word for you and not just you. But I want you to hear this message this morning. Praise God. Hey, everybody, please find your seats. Let Brother Boo, let him, let him be able to hear Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Boo, I want you to be able to hear this message. Just let's let's not pray with him any longer. Let's, let's everybody find our seats, please. Amen. Brother Boo, I want you to hear this message along with some others I believe that it's going to talk to. Micah chapter 7. Starting in verse 8. The Bible says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. Because you don't know who's on my side. I got somebody when he steps up. It's just came across my mind. This missionary was telling a story. He was going to a village to preach. And I already know right now I'm going to have to cut a bunch of stuff out of this message because I'm never going to get there to the end. It will be 3 o'clock. Okay. So don't, don't have a heart attack. I'm going I'm I'm to trim it up. But 
<laughs> this missionary was going down the road and there had been some hit guys hired to take him out because some of the voodoo leaders and things did not like the message that he was preaching. It was kind of ruining their business. Because when Jesus steps on the scene, hey Saul, you don't need the witch of Endor. That's right. Come on. When Jesus steps on the scene, he's all you need. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a fact. You search other places, you you're searching in the wrong place. Yes, sir. Amen. So this missionary is going down the road. And all of a sudden this car begins to aggressively try to run them off the road. And so the missionary and his wife pulled over and it's like, man, what's going on? And the uh, missionary looked in the rearview mirror. He said, these guys with guns got out. He said, you could tell they were dressed sinister. It was not good motives on their mind. He said, they got about halfway to his car. And he said they turn around like to run over each other. He said they were scrambling, jumping in the car, threw it in drive, spinning tires, trying to get out of there. He was like, what was all that about? That was odd. So the next day he was in the village. Somebody came up and said, well, there's some guys that tried to run you off the road. Yesterday? Well, yes, there was. Well, let me, let me tell you what was going on. They had been hired to take you and your wife out. They're sick of the message that you're preaching. You're going around messing their little worlds up, and they're sick of it. They were, they were hired to take you out. But they said when they got about halfway to your car, so there's these guys that stepped out of the back of the car, and they were so big, and they were so powerful, it scared them out of their minds and they ran as hard as they could run. Right. Let me tell you something. When Jesus steps on the scene, yes, I don't care how big the devil looks. I don't care how big the situation looks. When Jesus steps on the scene, he's going to make them look like little midgets, I'm telling you. Our God's alive and well. He's the King of Kings. He's the giant of God. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the great I Am. He's the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, immutable God of glory. There's none like Him. Amen. Rejoice not against me, O oh mine enemy. You don't know who you're messing with. You don't know who my God is. You better be careful. You push too far, you may get something back on you. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Amen. It can get dark in this old world, and it is. But I'm telling you right now, we've got the light. Amen. We've got the light of all light shining in our world. Amen. And when we entertain like him like we did today, he shined upon us his glory this morning. Amen. I want to preach you this little thought. Four more yards. Four more yards. You can be seated. Walter Payton is considered one of the greatest running backs of all time. He holds many, many records. And for decades, he held records that uh, stood for decades. And some of them are, I believe, still standing. He was an incredible, incredible running back. And... When he passed, they began to look at his stats, and they found out that Walter Payton had run nine miles, four yards at a time. That's touching the football almost 12,000 times in his career. Now, let me tell you, most of us, if somebody, we went for a job interview, and they said, let me tell you up front, for the endurance of your career, you're going to get hit almost 12,000 times. You're going to get concussions. You're going to get bruised ribs. You're, you're going to get legs that cramp. You're going to have your head knocked off. You're going to have 300-pound linemen that are trying to tear you apart. Right. When you try to run up the middle, they want to take you out. Right. You try to run around the end game, they're going to try to take you out. 
Amen. They're going to wipe you out. You want the job. And, and, and after your career, you're probably going to have some arthritis problems. You're going to probably, Earl Campbell. I used to love Earl Campbell. Amen. That was a bad boy. 36 inch thighs, man, they'd pile on him three or four at a time. He'd haul him down the field. He was a bad boy. I remember he had, he, had, he had kind of a short neck, but he was so thick and stocky. He would literally, because his neck, the way he was built, he would duck his head and push his shoulders up, literally rest the helmet on his shoulders. And I've seen him go into linemen head first. You're thinking, man, this guy's going to break his neck. But he would literally, he'd hit him in the chest, and you could see him just, uh, That's right. he'd do it. breaking up the middle. But at the end of his career, when he got older, I saw video clips of him in interviews. His body had been racked. Yes, but if they told you up front, you're going to get hit 12,000 times and knocked flat. Yeah. These guys are going to pound you. In fact, I'm just telling you up front, they're going to try to take you out. Right. Come on. Key word being take you out. Yes, sir. There's an enemy that wants to take you out. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. I said there's an enemy that wants to take you out. Yes, sir. All the way out. Yes. Yes, he, he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes, he did not come to give you a pretty career. No. He didn't come to play games. He no. came mean in business. Yes, sir. And he came to take you completely out. Yes, Somebody, yes. hear me, he came to take you out. Yes, sir. You turn that job down. When you get to be 50... Your hands are not going to work right because the, the, the fingers have been busted up and broken so many times. Your, your ankles are going to be locked up because you broke your ankles so many times. Your, your knees are not going to function right because you had to have arthroscopic surgery so many times just to keep your career going. No, we wouldn't want, we wouldn't want that. We'd turn that down. But Walter Payton went nine miles, four yards at a time. He did not go down in history as one of the world's leading running backs because he got knocked down. Right. That's right. Come on. He went down as one of the greatest because he always got back up. Yeah. He always got back in the huddle and said, give it to me, boys. Yeah. Come on, give me that ball again, boys. Yes, yeah, I'm hurting. Yes, I'm bruised. My side's hurting. My head's hurting. Yes, My neck's hurting. My chest feels like it's breaking. Yeah. But give me the ball, boys. I'll run it for you. I'll get another for you. Hey, it's three and four. Give it to me. I'll get us a first down. I'm going through that line. Give it to me. Did he go to the huddle hurting? Yes. Did he go to the huddle sometimes bruised? Yes. Did he go to the huddle sometimes having been hit so hard he got up wondering if his name was still Walter Payton? Right. Right. I'm telling you. He was an aggressive running back. And they would hit him. Sometimes I don't think he even knew if he was Walter Payton. But give me the ball. Give me the ball, guys. We're going to win this game. Oh, yeah. With him on the team, they won Super Bowl. Yeah, he got Pro Bowl. He, he got most valuable play. He got all kinds of stuff. He was incredible. Not because he always ran for a touchdown every time. But because he got up and he ran Four more yards. Four more yards. He was of the mentality. You knock me down. You better step back and watch. Because I'm not going to be sitting on the sideline drinking Gatorade. I'm not going to be sitting on the sideline walking around watching. I'm not going to be sitting there watching my teammates go through what they're going through to get to heaven. I'm not going to be sitting there letting everybody else pull the load. Give me the ball. I'm going four more yards. I'm coming off of this bench. I'm going to the huddle. I'm getting in the game. Come on, QB. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. It's second and six. I'll make it. I'll make it one and one. Give me the ball. We're taking it all the way. His mentality was give me the ball. I may not get a touchdown. I may not do the 50-yard run that everybody likes, but I'm going to get four yards this time. I'm going to give my team four more yards. I'm going to give my family four more yards. I'm going to give my soul four more yards. I'm going all the way. Oh, praise God. 
Somebody say, I'm going four yards. I'm going four yards. I'm not setting down. I'm not setting back. I'm going four more yards. Somebody praise me. Somebody praise me. I'm going four more yards. Devil, you can lie all you want to. You can try to deceive all you want to. You can tell me all the junk you want to. But I'm going four more yards. I'm going four more yards. I'm going four more yards. Oh, praise God. Most touchdowns are not scored by the fancy runs that usually ground out four yards at a time. I've been abused. I've been misused. I've been abandoned. I've been hurt. Lineman came through the line and knocked my block off. 300 pound defensive line that came through and saw me fixing to come up the middle, close the hole and hit me so hard, I don't know where I'm at. The devil ever done you that way? I love, I don't like football too much anymore. I'm kind of sick of the, they turned the NFL into a bunch of babies with all the rules and, and all this kneeling for our anthem stuff so I'm not I'm not much of a fan anymore but I used to I used to really like football and uh, I have to be honest with you I'm just like anybody else I you know the, the little video clips of Earl Campbell you know maybe busting through getting one or busting through getting three or four not, but the rest not too much to look at you know I mean? But boy, when he would, when he would slice and dice, he'd come up through the middle. Guy'd reach for him. Another guy'd reach. He'd sidestep him, do his move, and that big old boy would get aired out, and it'd be a chase to the finish line. And he'd maybe rip off about a sixty-yard touchdown run. That'll get your adrenaline flowing. Like, go on, boy. Yeah. Right. That's right. Or the, the guy in the end zone that takes a kickoff return deep in the, the end zone comes running out and makes a 106-yard kickoff return touchdown. All over the field, weaving and bopping, avoiding guys, get slapped and hit and keep going. And runs it all the way in. Yes, now that's 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 fun to watch. Yes. Right. Right. But sitting down and watching somebody get busted every yard uh -huh. kind of gets monotonous. Right. But can I tell you, it's that Walter Payton or that Earl Campbell. Right. You give them the ball, yeah. and you can almost count on an average of four to five yards of carry. The mentality was, I got knocked down a while ago. Yep. That guy's after me. I can see the blood in his eyes. He, he's not playing. He, he's going to try to take me out, much like the enemy. He's not playing. He's trying to take families out. Because right. yes, he knows his days are short. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. He knows the coming of God is yes, soon. Yes, he knows Jesus fixed right. to split the eastern yes, sky. Sir. Somebody hear me. Yes, he knows he's not yes, stupid. Sir. He's on the other side of the line. And when the quarterback steps back with the ball, that defensive line was looking hard and handing it to the running back. Our running back's got it. I'm fixing to knock his head off. I'm fixing to take him out. You right. think that ain't the way they think? When it's ball time, them boys are out there. They don't care if they break the other guy's leg. I'm, they don't care. If the guy has to be hauled off the field with a concussion, they're in it to win it. And the enemy is in it to win it. Yes, sir. He's in it to defeat you. Yes, he is. That's true. He's in it to take you out. Yes, sir. He's not in, in it to stand across the scrimmage line 
and discuss game plans? And can we be nice to each other? Now, when you come through the line, I'm just going to kind of tap you on the head and pat you on the shoulder. And, and, and when I do that, you gently lay down so I can call it tackle. Has some of them 300 pound plus linemen that if they get their hands on you, you're in trouble. So much so, that's why there's so many restrictions about how you can touch a quarterback. Because they have broken guys almost in half before. The enemy is desiring to break you in half. He's desiring to tear you up. He's desiring to destroy your spirit. He's desiring to kill your soul. He's not kidding. But we have got to have the mentality, I may have gotten knocked down. And I may be hurting. I may be struggling. But I'm fixing to get up. I'm getting back in the huddle. I'm getting the football in my hand. And I'm coming through the line. And I'm going to run till you get me, devil. And when you tackle me, I'm getting back up again. Because I still got four more yards in me. When my life is reviewed, when it's all said and done for me, let it be said... He got knocked down. He went through some valleys. He went through some struggles. He went through some trials. He went through some situations he didn't understand. He went through some heartache and, and tears in his eyes. But he kept getting up. He had the tenacity to get back in the huddle and say, Devil, you knocked me down. You come against me. You came against me. You gave it your best shot. But I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord. I'm coming with a sword in my hand. I'm coming to fight the fight. I'm not giving up. I got four more yards in the devil. You're not keeping me down. You knocked me down, but I'm getting back up. I'm going four more yards. Somebody say four more yards. Four more yards. I'm going four more yards. I may have been knocked down 4,000 times. 12,000 times. But on that 4,000 and first time, I'm going through the line. I said, I'm going through the line. There's a goal line out there, friend. There's a touchdown coming. The touchdown of all touchdowns. But we're here to say, well done. I've been knocked down 4,000 times. This is the right on that 4,000 the first time. I'm going to cross the goal line. I'm going to hear him say, well done. I'm going to make it. Amen. Amen. Brother Bryce is not down for the count. In his spirit, he's a winner. Amen. He's going to get up in the spirit. Amen. He's going to cross the goal line. One way or the other. One way or the other, he's going to cross the goal line. Paul let us know that if we had hope in this life only, we'd be of all men most miserable. Yeah. Amen. But if we keep getting back up, yeah. we keep putting our hand in the master's hand. Yes, sir. We keep getting in the huddle with him. Yeah. We keep getting his instructions. We keep getting his plays. Hey, I'll tell you what. On this play, you run around this way, look over here, I'll get you right there. The defense is one. One way to now. Next play. Hey. You're in the huddle. You're in the huddle with with great quarterback. It's okay now this time. I want you to go about seven yards. I want you to hook back and hit you. All right. Next hole. Okay, man, you got knocked in. You got wiped out on that one right there. What you're trying to do. This time, I want you to slam out and slam around. And I want you to do a quick run straight across and at midfield, I'm going to hit you. And then let me point. Man, I just knocked him smooth out. Oh. And this cat is at it again. Hey, there's a great touchdown coming. For those that keep getting back in the huddle. Those that keep saying there's four more yards. I got four more yards in me. Yeah, devil, you hit me and knocked me down. I'm laying out on my back. I can't catch my breath. I don't feel like getting up again. I don't feel like going on again. 
I'm gonna put four more yards down. You better hide and watch. Yeah. I'm gonna put four more yards down. Four more yards I've got. Paul said, I've looked back over my life and determined that I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. It's been a fight. The devil didn't lay down and give it to me. When Walter Payton and the Chicago Bears won the Super Bowl, I can tell you, the other team didn't give it to them. They didn't say, oh, Walter, you're so special. You're, you're such a great player. We're just going to give this one to you. We're going to, have, we're going to play about half throttle. Oh, you win the Super Bowl, and you get the most valuable player trophy because you're so great, and we, we just love you so much. <laughs> no, that defensive line that says, Walter, hey, you come across this line, and I'm going to try to take you out of this game. And they're serious. If we can, if we can incapacitate. Come on. A great player. Yes, you think they don't? Even yep. QBs. They try to slide in, maybe break their leg. I'm not kidding you. They do it. We're going to try to inca inca uh, capacitate the heavily, heavily, heavily. In other words, take them out. But if we can take him out, we don't have to deal with Walter Payton in this game. We can, we can focus on somebody else. That's right. That's what doing. Walter yeah. Payton, you come in this game, buddy. I'll take you out. Right. There's some of you, the devil's got his sights on you. Right. Because some of you sitting in this house this morning, you're dead serious about serving God. Right. You're not interested in playing games no. with God. Right. You're not trying to play some games. Right. You're not messing around. No. You got your eyes on the prize. The goal line's in sight. Right. If you haven't come to play games with God, you're dead serious. And the devil knows it. Yes, sir. Those that are playing games, and halfway in the game, yes, fiddling around, yes, sir. the devil's not going to mess with them too much. No, he will not. Kinda, he, just, he would rather just let you count them. Just, yeah. Don't hit him too hard. Just let him kind of coast. There's somebody that's seeking God's will. Somebody that's seeking the face of God. Yes, sir. Somebody that's desiring God. Yes. Somebody that's dead serious about serving God. That yes. says, I'm going to take them out. Yes. I'm going to take her out. I'm going to come through the line. I'm going to try to bust them up. I'm going to do all I can to take them out. Yes. Somebody hear me. The devil wants to take you out. But greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. My quarterback's the best quarterback. My coach is the best coach. And we win. It's in the back of the book. I said it's in the back of this old book. We win. I got to move on. Man, I got to skip some stuff here. couple other things I want to bring to you. Most of the time in our trials, the band's not on the sideline playing that cheery song. And all your fans are standing on the side giving the smile and the wave. And giving you that look. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time in a trial, it can be you, your enemy, and your God. Looking at each other face in the face. All right. What's the game plan? How are we going to get past this? I'm going to read you a Christian warfare code. If each of us could commit to this, it rearranged our warfare in the spirit. I'm a soldier in the army of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Pr faith, prayer, and the word are my weapons of warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. I'm a volunteer in this army. 
And I'm enlisted for eternity. I will either retire in this army at the rapture or die in this army, but I will not get out, sell out, be talked out, or be pushed out. I am faithful, reliable, capable, and dependable. If my God needs me, I am here. If he needs me in Sunday school to teach children, work with the youth, help adults, or just sit and learn, he can use me because I'm here. I'm a soldier. I'm not a baby. I do not need to be pampered, petted, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I'm a soldier. No one has to call me, remind me, write me, entice me, or lure me. I'm a soldier, saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom. I am committed. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. When Jesus called me into this army, I had nothing. And if I end up with nothing, I'm still a winner. I will win. My God will supply all my needs. I am more than a conqueror. I will triumph by the name of Jesus and the power of his spirit. I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. Devils cannot defeat me. People cannot disillusion me. Weather cannot weary me. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money can't master me. Governments cannot silence me. Hell cannot handle me because I'm a soldier committed to the cross. Four more y'all. Sometimes when it seems you just got the ball. I just got up. And I see an opening right up the middle. My offensive line has opened this beautiful hole up. And I can see the goal post. I can see, I can see the winning spot from here. I got the ball. And I just blew by the quarterback. I'm fixing to bust through that hole and make a run. And all of a sudden, that 300 plus pound defensive lineman, what used to be a hole there, not a hole there anymore. It's plugged up, and all I see is jersey as I eat it. And then I lay there wondering, who am I? What am I doing? What, what am I doing this for? Sometimes in our life, we get up. We think, okay, this is it. This is going to be the run this time. Just about the time we got the ball in hand. That defensive lineman. Just about when we're breaking through and we can feel the air out. I'm fixing the air out. I'm fixing to turn it on. And I'm fixing to go full stride. And I'm running it all the way. Some of you have been knocked down before. Some of you have been knocked down a bunch of times. Many of us, I'm going to tell you the truth. If I was serving God right now, because of the number of times I did or did not feel like walking with him, I did or did not feel like being faithful. I did or did not feel like praying. I did or did not feel like praising and worshiping. I wouldn't be standing before you this morning. Because most of the time, and you either take this negative or positive, but most of the time, the Bible says, straight as the way narrows the gate and few there be that find it. It's going to take the real football players. It's going to take the real men and women of God, men and women of God to make heaven. Yes, sir. It ain't coming to those sitting on the sideline drinking Gatorade. No, sir. That's right. That's fact. Playing but not participating. Right. There but not engaged. Right. Come on. It's, it's going to take a real man of God and a woman of God to make heaven. Amen. And the devil is looking to take you completely out. Right. Disappointments. Bashed hopes, weariness of running over 
and over and over again. Take this positive or negative, but most of the time, this is a fight. Oh, I don't want to hear that, Pastor. I want to hear about all the, whoo, dancing and shouting. How old Brother Daniel does it? I like to dance, man. I beat the brother and I like to dance. I like to be on top. When I wasn't, I was in better shape than I am now. I love to run the house. There was something about laying an instrument down and taking off and it felt like supernatural jets would kick in afterburners and if I don't slow down I'm not making this corner I'm fixing to create another door it's just something just feeling the exhilarating push of the Holy Ghost right. positive or negative take it out you want it's not always a dance it's not always a shout. It's not always a 98-yard punt return or a 106-yard kickoff return or that 68-yard run right up the middle as you still form every defensive unit out there and you run right past them. Those that are going to make it to heaven, I promise you, are those that grind four yards out in prayer. The singers and musicians that are really used by God are those that's going to grind out the anointing with prayer and fasting. The preacher that's effective in touching God's people and getting some folks to heaven. It's not going to get it. Always playing around. He's got to be in the Word. He's got to be on his knees, seeking the face of God, seeking the anointing of God. Child of God that wants to be faithful. You won't stay in the race. You'll find the nearest exit sign. You're looking for the easy way out. Right. I'm just being totally honest with you. And you say, Pre preacher, I need I need to hear something positive. It is positive. If you if you if you're walking in the spirit and you look at it right. It's positive in that when you get the tenacity of the Holy Ghost. With age it becomes positive. When you say, I know, I know going into this fight that the Lord called it spiritual warfare. He didn't call it spiritual picnics or spiritual merry-go-rounds. I don't find a scripture in the Bible that says, come unto me, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost, and then I'm going to put you on a merry-go-round. And you should fight. You're going to whistle and twist around to get to heaven. Play in the prayer playground until it's all said and done. Yeah. No, he said, I might have to put a hell of salvation on you. Uh, come on. Amen. I might have to give you a sword of the spirit. Right. Bless, breastplate of righteousness. Feet shod with the preparation of peace. I don't have to give you my word to fight with. Right. Spirit to Hallelujah. help you overcome. Yes, sir. There's going to be moments of refreshing yeah. that I'll let you know I'm still there, but right. uh, there's going to be times that you're going to be uh, you're going to be a soldier out there in the uh, backwoods of Afghanistan, and you're going to be disconnected seemingly from your platoon, and you're not going to know where some of your fellow comrades are at, and you're going to be out there fighting, and you're going to feel alone, and you're going to make a radio call, and the radio's going to work. You sure would like to hear the commander's voice, but can't reach him right now, so if you're gonna make it, you gotta you gotta knuckle down now, buddy. Amen. If you're gonna get back to base, it's on you. 
Jesus never said the road would be easy. But he did say, I'll give you grace that's sufficient for your every need. I don't know how he does it. He amazes me. Sometimes in my human reasoning, I have to admit sometimes I load in my own life and then as I work with other people I try to love other people through situations in their life I sit and listen as people disclose things to me that they're going through, their hurts, their pains, their worries and I say God oh Lord if I could snap my finger and make it better for them if I could change this, if I could I can fix it right now, Lord. It just seems, seems a little heavy, Lord. It seems a little much. But then I have to step back and realize, son, you're just a man filling an office in my kingdom. But I'm God. I know what they can handle. And I know what they need right when they need it. You just do your job. Let me do mine. I don't know how he does it. But those that get that tenacity of, all right, and I don't know, I don't know why I got hit so hard. I don't know why I went through what I went through. I don't know why it got so ugly. But Job said, Lord, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. I don't really understand, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to get up, I'm going to the huddle, and I'm going four more yards. God, I may not feel you, I may not know where you're at. Right. I may not understand the situation. Right. My head's hurting. My ribs are hurting. My hips are hurting. I feel like I've got a, a muscle that's cramping. I don't know if I can run in, anymore today. Right. But I'm getting up and I'm going to the huddle. Right. I'm going to take my orders from the quarterback. And if he hands me the ball, I'm running with everything yes, that's in me. Yes, sir. I wonder this morning if there's anybody... Maybe you've been knocked down. Maybe you maybe you've come through the line and you thought, hey, I've, I've got it this time. I've got it. I've got it. It's just gonna happen. I'm just run for a touchdown. It's gonna be good this time. And that defensive lineman out of nowhere rounds the corner. And you're on your back again. Pain searing through your head. Having a hard time breathing. You're struggling to even remember where you're at. I really feel like the Lord this morning is trying to encourage somebody. Doesn't matter how many times you've fallen. Doesn't matter how many times you've been knocked down. It doesn't matter how many lies the devil's told you. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. The key to winning is not those that got knocked down, but those that got up and ran four more yards. Heaven's going to be won by those, Brother Johnson, that got up and ran four more yards. Brother Dan, four more yards, four yards at a time. And one of these days, we're going to hear Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys that I'm going to prepare for you.
I just wonder if there's anybody in the house before we leave that would like to say I I need to get back in the huddle. I, I've been struggling. I've been knocked down. I'm not talking about being backslidden. We always like to, our mind likes to go there. Well, if we go to the altar, if I, if I admit I've been in a struggle, I'm backslidden. That's the devil trying to keep you out of the huddle. Amen, amen. But I just wonder right now, before we go, is there anybody, I love these old altars. Yes, I can't help it. I just, almost every service, I just have to open them up. Yes, to me, that's the place where we huddle around together huddle with the king, getting our game plan back together. I wonder before we leave if there's anybody you'd like to say, I want to I get back in the huddle. I want to come to the altar and I just want to spend a little time in the huddle with the Lord and I want to revisit my game plan and I want to get determined to go four more yards. I can't, I can't let my current situation and things that I've dealt with, I can't let them keep me down. I can't, I can't stay down. I can't be defeated. I see heaven in sight, I see the goal line in sight, and I, I just can't stay down. I've got to, I got to get up and go four more yards. Somebody asked the Lord for the tenacity to get up. Every time you get knocked down, every time you get hit by the defensive lineman as he comes through, Rejoice not against me, O oh mine enemy. Laugh if you want to, enemy. Mock me if you want to, enemy. But when I fall, I shall arise. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody else want to join us around here for a moment? I want to keep fighting. I want to keep pushing. I want to keep reaching. There's no place for me to turn around. I've come too far to look back. Where am I going to go? Who am I going to turn to? Nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. staying down I'm not staying down I'm not staying flat on my back devil I'm going to come up swinging I'm going to do it again oh yes oh hallelujah I'm not backing down from any giant get back in the huddle win. Oh yes. Oh,
in the world. Rejoice not, O oh, mine enemy, against me. Laugh, enemy, if you want to. Mock me if you want to, enemy. Make fun of me, enemy. I'm going to get up. I'm going to tell you the devil's the final loser. You hear what I'm telling you? His end, his demise is already in the book. It's already written. His demise is already written three plans. He doesn't have hope. But we've got a great hope in Christ Jesus. We just got to keep getting up. We just got to keep going four yards at a time. We just got to keep pressing on and marching on four yards at a time. Amen. Those that march on four yards at a time are going to hear him say, Well done. Oh, yes. Oh yes, I'm gonna see a victory. Oh hallelujah! To your Lord. Oh praise God! Oh God. My God will never fail. My God will never, never fail. My God will never, never fail. 